Currently, there are only two approved therapies for ALS. Both of them only offer a few extra months and they have various side effects. As I researched the disease, I came across the Diana protocol and although not curative, it helps me with the daily management of the disease. In this video, I would like to share with you how the Diana protocol was developed, what it entails and how it helps me. This could not only benefit ALS patients, but also patients with other neurological diseases such as Alzheimer's. I'm Jacques and at One More Marvel, I would like to help you discover ways to live an exceptional, passionate and purposeful life with a terminal illness. Whether you are a patient, a caregiver, family member or friend, if you are new here, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. Let me start by saying first that I am not a medical professional. This is my story and if you want to start the Diana protocol, consult a medical professional and do it under the supervision of your medical team. After receiving a diagnosis like ALS, most medical professionals see the diagnosis as a death sentence and then leave you to get on with the process of dying. The story of the Diana Protocol is different. It is a story of hope, belief and determination. This is a story of a father, Vincent Tadone, who refused to give up on his daughter after she was diagnosed with ALS and has been doing everything in his power to help her fight the disease and perhaps even turn it around. I strongly suggest you get your hands on the book and also visit their website. Links are in the description below. The Diana protocol is in essence a combination therapy using supplements to assist the body in the Krebs cycle. It consists of supplements, non-exhaustive exercise and massages with coconut oil. It also includes additional supplements recommended by the American National Institute of Health as well as supplements found to be beneficial by other ALS patients. With every alternative therapy, there will always be many voices downplaying its effectiveness or outright oppose the use of it. The Tadone family gains nothing from promoting the therapy and I suggest you investigate it as part of your own management of ALS or other neuro neurodegenerative diseases. To give a balanced view, I include two links below of scientific papers. One that shows the Diana protocol can be effective and one that shows no clinical improvement when taking it. I will explain the protocol and at the end tell you how it benefits me and assists with the management of my symptoms. Dr. Vincent Tadone is, is a retired orthopedic surgeon. When his daughter Diana was diagnosed with ALS, he poured himself over every single piece of published literature on the disease that he could find. Because no one in his wife's family or his family had signs of similar neurological conditions, he ruled out genetic causes. Thus, he looked into environmental factors and toxins that could likely have caused the disease in his daughter. While researching environmental toxins, he came across cases in which drywall imported from China caused severe illness in people. Diana previously had a miscarriage, their dog developed cancer, and her husband had permanent respiratory tract infections. They then investigated and found that this particular type of Chinese drywall had been installed in their house. They did a blood test and found that Diana had low levels of strontium in her blood. Dr. Tadone then convinced Diana to try chelation therapy, which attempts to remove toxins from the body. Later on, a toxicologist advised that the chelation therapy would actually release more toxins into the bloodstream. He currently does not recommend chelation therapy at all. Thus, his search continued. Diana tried various therapies, went on a keto diet, tried various experimental drugs, but most of these experimental therapies had severe side effects. Despite all of their failures, Dr. Tudone continued his research, or rather searching for that proverbial needle in the haystack. Each new treatment gave Diana hope, but ended in disappointment when it did not slow down the progression of the disease. Despite the failures, Diana held on to hope and the belief that each failure was just a process of eliminating ineffective treatments on her way to finding a solution. In their search for a treatment, they asked the neurologist if he had to recommend a treatment to his own mother or daughter, what he would do and why. He then recommended a drug that was thought to break down the glutamate in ALS patients. Unfortunately, the drug was not successful in phase 3 clinical trials, but it got Dr. Tadone thinking. If excess glutamate poisoned cells, then finding a way to break down the glutamate could potentially help in the management of the disease and its symptoms. This led him to investigate glutamate dehydrogenase and glutamate decarboxylase, 
which metabolizes glutamate in the body in a process called the Krebs cycle. This is a complex cycle that provides energy to the cells and without energy the cells die. The definition of the Krebs cycle is the sequence of reactions by which most living cells generate energy during the process of aerobic respiration. It takes place in the mitochondria and uses up oxygen and producing carbon dioxide and water as waste products and ADP is converted into energy-rich ATP. Because it's not possible to artificially synthesize these two enzymes that break down the glutamate, he then investigated what the precursors to these enzymes are and if he could get the body to manufacture these two enzymes. This investigation was also unsuccessful. He then reasoned that if glutamate cannot be broken down, then chances are that the body needs what is on the other end of the Krebs cycle. Thus, he started Yana on GABA, and it had a positive effect on his spasticity. Next was, a was AKG, alpha-ketoglutarate, which he mixed with AAKG, arginine alpha-ketoglutarate. This is frequently taken by bodybuilders and is much less hard on the stomach. After taking this, Diana had much less muscle vesiculations and cramps. I can attest to this, as my vesiculations also decreased in severity since I started the protocol. In his excitement, Dr. Tudon started talking to everybody that would listen to him about the positive effects these drugs had on Diana. Then other people started taking it for other conditions. One person wrote to Dr. Tudon that it helps his wife's, uh, helped his wife's Alzheimer's and that she could remember him and their children and could actually get out of bed, which she was not able to do previously. This set them on a path to investigate other supplements that could benefit the Krebs cycle or health in general, and so the protocol was developed. The full Diana protocol can be found on the website winningthefight.org. It is a massive number of tablets to take every day, but you get used to it. And the benefits are definitely worth it. You can choose if you want to take the core protocol or the extended protocol with all the other, other supplements included. I choose to take everything as it contains things such as B propolis and vitamin B, which is good for your health in general. The supplements are not the only tool that she uses to improve her condition. At the top of her list is her mental attitude. It is also key to find a neurologist and a healthcare team that support your mental state and do not just consign you to dealing with the thoughts of your death after the diagnosis. You need people around you that believe with you that the disease can be fought and that will do everything they can with you to help you improve your condition. There is a link below to a video I did on the, the, the effects a positive mindset can have on the outcome of any treatment and on your general well-being. Diana also ensures that she does enough non-exhausting exercise and she massages her muscles with coconut oil. I recommend that anyone interested in how this metab metabolic treatment can help ALS and other neurological diseases to buy the book and regularly visit their website to receive up-to-date information on the research they are doing. I include a link below where the Diana protocol was tested in the lab and it shows promising results. The Diana protocol has really helped me, especially with the muscle vesiculations. I used to get them so bad that they caused extreme irritation and distraction, impacting every single waking moment. These constant and sometimes violent contractions also consistently reminded me of the disease and had a an extreme negative impact on my mental state. I still get vesiculations, but not to the extent I did before the protocol. I don't do the massaging with coconut oil, but I try to exercise every day, um, either by doing yoga, rowing, or resistance band training. What happened to Diana? 15 years on and, and her dad has still not given up on finding something that will help her. They found that she has a type of gut bacteria that can cause ALS symptoms, and they are treating that with antibiotics and probiotics. She's also undergoing stem cell treatment, which is resulting in speech improvement, muscle strength, and endurance. They continue to live in hope that she will be fully cured. Please consult your healthcare prof professional or healthcare practitioner before starting something like this, but be aware of the negative attitude that some doctors have. I've seen it in, my, uh, in myself that the, mo the moment you receive your diagnosis, it is as if you are already written off as dead. Find people who can lift you up and support you on your journey. Leave a comment if you found this helpful and also tell me what you use to manage your condition. And remember, never give up, stay positive 
minimize stress, laugh a lot, love even more.